Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys 10 differences between the new cut tab of DaVinci Resolve and the older style editing from the edit tab. So at a glance, the difference between the cut tab, which you see on screen right now, and the edit tab is that the cut tab is designed more towards a quick editing process. It doesn't give you all of the little functions that you may want to use if you're doing a very complicated video edit, but by removing some of the clutter, the cut tab allows you to move a little bit faster in your video editing process. However, on the edit tab, if you need to do more complicated things such as keyframing animation, then you have access to that mostly through the inspector. Okay, so if we take a look at the timeline in the edit tab, you'll notice that there is only one timeline down here. So if we take a look at the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve, you'll see that there's only one timeline here. It's possible to zoom in and out of the timeline to basically the full length of your video to the full length of your timeline or to zoom in as far as individual frames. Uh, usually you'll have that somewhere in the middle, but on the cut tab you have a big advantage in that you have access to three timelines simultaneously. So you'll see the full timeline up here in the middle. Note that regardless of how many clips you have in your timeline, that it's always going to show you the full length of your timeline from start to finish. Then below that you have the main timeline down here at the bottom which will probably be used for making most cuts because it's kind of represented here in a second by second basis so at any given time you can look at six seven seconds of video so it's about the right amount of time if you want to simply make cuts or trims to your video now if i happen to make a slice with the control b shortcut i can split a clip into two in the timeline just like you can on the edit tab and then i can left click at the edge of one of my clips and start going into a trim edit mode here and this is when you will see the third timeline pop up here in the top right preview window note that it is talking about the number of frames that you are adjusting at a si single time so if i left click on this barrier here and drag it you'll see how many frames are being added onto or being taken away from the video clip in question. And my number two difference here is going to be that if you left click on the border between two clips, you can actually see the end frame of the left side clip and the starting frame of the right side clip up here in these two preview windows side by side. So it splits the preview into two there and you can left click and drag and adjust both of them at the same time, getting a preview of that ending frame and starting frame uh, that you want for both clips. So by being able to preview both sides of the clips at once, it's easier to get your timeline position where you want it to be. And you can always do frame by frame adjustments in this third timeline up there. So it only takes a few seconds to adjust and trim your clips. Okay, so the number three difference is the decrease of clutter around the screen. So when you take a look at the cut tab here, you'll notice that there are less windows that are open by default compared to the edit tab. So in the edit tab, you have windows like the edit index over here, the audio mixer over there in the bottom right, and the inspector in the top right, as well as access to the sound library up here and the effects library. And then over on the cut tab, you do have the effects library, but it's already split into transitions, titles, and effects individually. So basically breaking that one tab into three. Uh, but the rest of those other tabs don't really have a place here on the cut tab. Part of the philosophy is that the cut tab should be able to be more usable on systems that only have one monitor uh, by reducing the amount of clutter. So some people may find it easier to work with the cut tab on laptops. Difference number four is that when you're editing in cut mode, you're pretty much always, in a sense, in trim edit mode. So if I hover over any clip or the border between the clips, you get access to those functions that you will see if you select the trim tool in the edit tab. In the middle of the clip, you can offset which portions of the source material are going to be used in the clip without changing the length of it. And if we go over to the edit tab, you'll notice that there are more functions in the bottom timeline, such as the blade tool. You can still do blade edit mode slices by hitting control B and the cut tab, but selecting the blade tool is not really an option. So when you're editing in edit mode, you generally select the trim tool to have access to these trim functions. In the cut mode, you're pretty much always in that mode. So if you are going to use cut edit, I would suggest you get used to the control B hotkey so that you can still make those slices that you would use the blade tool to do. 
So difference number five, and I, I think I already mentioned this a little bit, but the effects library was broken into three different tabs over here in the top left, transitions, titles, and effects. If we go over to the edit tab, you can see that the effects library has all of these, uh, but it's a little more cluttered together. Uh, you have to kind of navigate down through the menus to find exactly what you're looking for. And that's usually not really a problem, but I would say that it's a little bit easier to find it using the cut tab because if you want to titles you just click titles and you can scroll down on here just reduces one or two clicks from what you generally need to do using the edit tab of course if you found a title you can drag it into the timeline on the bottom you can also drag it directly onto the full project timeline uh, you'll notice though there because this is a two hour video clip i pulled in that it's only a little sliver over here but you can just drag on the timeline to automatically snap to that. So that's not really a problem, even if your clip is really small. Okay, so speaking of things that are a little bit easier for you when you're on the cut tab, these functions that exist in the media pools, such as smart insert and append, basically have smart detection about where things should go. So when you're editing on the edit tab, generally you need to position the timeline perfectly before you actually add in something like a new clip so that you don't accidentally overwrite anything. Uh, yes, there is snapping, but if you're editing on the cut tab, um, you don't always need to position the timeline cursors. So if I double click on this clip here and I set some in out points with IO in order to set which part I want to add to this video clip, then I can have DaVinci Resolve figure out where I'm trying to add it to uh, just by having the timeline cursor somewhere in the vicinity of where I actually want the clip. So since my timeline cursor is relatively close to this cut I made earlier, if I hit Smart Insert, it's going to pop in the new clip uh, at that cut time and then push the rest of the timeline to the right. So I was able to squeeze a clip into the timeline without even positioning my timeline cursor first. So it kind of has some smart sense there. If I hit the Append button, it will try to add uh, the video clip basically right onto the end of the timeline there. Um, and it does that once again without having to reposition the timeline cursor. So you kind of get the theme here when you use these tools, DaVinci Resolve tries to figure out what position you actually want it in. So hopefully you get the theme here that whenever you use these tools, DaVinci Resolve kind of figures out where they're supposed to go based on roughly where you are in the timeline. Okay, so number seven, the inspector from the edit tab, that's this window over here on the right that allows you to edit pretty much any setting about your video clip, uh, has been replaced with this tools option here. So the tools located below the preview window gives you kind of like an inspector light. You can change some of the settings about your video clip, such as the zoom in the position of the shot, whether you want the clip to go in slow-mo or fast speed by uh, controlling the speed of the clip and uh, being able to add on camera stabilization with a single click basically. So you have access to setting some functions about your clips but not nearly as many as you have on the inspector of the edit tab. So kind of going back to that philosophy where the cut tab is for more quick edits and it doesn't really give you every feature that DaVinci Resolve has but it gives you the important tools you need to do things in a more streamlined fashion. So number eight, and along with that, is that there's no way to really do keyframe-based animation on the cut tab. So on the edit tab, the inspector over here to the right has these little diamonds you can click on. So whenever you want to animate a setting over time, such as, let's just say opacity here, just to make it quick, you can click on this little white diamond. And that will set an animation keyframe. And in order to have that setting animate over time, you simply need to pick another point in time, set a new value, which will automatically create the keyframe. And now if we go back between those two points and hit play, you can see here that when the opacity gets lowered down, the clip turns black because the background behind it is black and our clip is now partially see-through. 50% uh, opacity would mean 50% transparent. So if you want to do any of those kind of edits where you animate settings over time with keyframes, you need the edit tab to do that as far as I've seen. 
Okay, so number nine, if you click over here on this button on the cut tab, you can see full preview of the clips that are in your project, including the timelines that you are working on, your source clips, and it even comes with audio waveforms. So straight from the media pool, you can actually set in out points without even double clicking on them and popping it over on this preview window to the right. Um, so I can just hover over here, hit I to set an end point and find somewhere where the audio waveform ends. Let's just pretend that was the end of when someone's talking, hit O, and that will set my out point. And then I can just drag my clip straight into the timeline there. So just by being able to preview almost all of the information about your media clips straight from within the media pool like this, uh, kind of reduces the amount of steps that you may need to take once again. And then in the media pool of the edit tab, you can see thumbnails for your media clips in the media pool. And you can still scrub through it by hovering over it to get basically new thumbnail generations for uh, that point in the video clip. But without the audio waveforms and without being able to see a, a full timeline of thumbnails, it's a lot harder to find exactly where you want to click on without double clicking it and opening it up in your preview window over here. So the cut tab definitely has a cooler way of looking at the media pool. Okay, so the number 10 difference has to do with the bottom timeline you see in the cut tab. Uh, I would describe it that the timeline moves the cursor on this bottom cut mode timeline, whereas on the edit mode, the cursor moves the timeline. So if we hit play while we're on the cut tab, what you'll see is that the bottom timeline cursor is always positioned in the center and it will smoothly glide across from left to right as you hit play. So by never really needing to worry about the position of your cursor in the timeline, I would argue that it's easier to get to exactly where you want to be to make your cut or trim and then do what you need to do in the cut tab over the edit tab. So rather than needing to worry about where the cursor's at, I simply need to get it to the time I need to make that cut. And then I can hit control B and drag the timeline over again, noting where some of the audio waveforms might be down there below the video thumbnails and hit control B again. But if you try to move around in the timeline like that using the edit tab, not only do you need to care about the timeline cursor, but you also need to care about how zoomed in you are. Because if you're too zoomed in, it's going to be so disorienting that you won't be able to really see where you need to make the cut in time. So because you only have one timeline, you're going to need to be worried about zooming in and out and also positioning your timeline cursor to where you want it to be and manually needing to drag from left to right can get a little bit annoying when you only have one monitor, so you have a smaller timeline to work with there. But then once again, over on the cut tab, not only do you not need to worry about zooming or the position of your timeline cursor, but also if you need to effectively zoom out so that you can navigate across your project, that's what the top timeline is for. So anywhere you need to go in your timeline for the project, you can simply drag up there on the top timeline it's going to have snapping and your cursor will be positioned in the bottom timeline perfectly wherever you go. So I would definitely argue that it makes moving around in your project timeline to be quite a bit easier because you just have less stuff you need to worry about. That's going to be it for my video on the 10 main differences between the cut mode and edit mode of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope you got something out of this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future video content.